Hi guys, welcome back to our truck camper renovation series. In this episode, we'll be installing the solar panels and all the related items to make those work in this Bigfoot truck camper. This will be the third part of our three-part renovation series for electrical, which we did the inverter and battery install, all the electrical wiring inside the camper, and then this one with the solar panel install. So I'm going to make myself a sketch of the whole roof here. I just want to have an idea what all the dimensions are. I do have a little sketch here which um, my blueprints aren't that accurate, but I had to use every square inch available almost up here, go with two different sizes of panels to be able to make it all work and get the approximately 1000 watts I was looking for. So we'll have uh, 100 watt panels, two at the front, one sideways there and one there, all connected in uh, a series configuration so we can keep the amps low and the voltage high. Then we have 200 watt panels. We have three of those, which will be connected in a series configuration also. So we'll have two feeds going down, hooking parallel to the batteries. So we'll go through all the items we're gonna to use to make this happen. We've got all eco-worthy panels because mainly because of dimensions of those panels made it all work on the roof. Panels vary so much in size and it's just the only certain sizes would actually work. And these ones actually between the 200s and 100s, I could get it all to fit. It took a lot of figuring and a lot of looking at different panels. So they're not expensive panels. They're pretty affordable. So we have the panels up on the roof. We're going to mount them with mostly small angle iron aluminum brackets. I'm going to put um, nut certs in the panels and then stainless bolts. I'm probably going to mount them out to the corners, possibly so I can angle them later, but I'm not really worried about that right now. I'm going to get them up there. And um, we're going to bond these aluminum pieces down with 3M tape, which kind of freaks me out. I've never done that before. And then we're going to seal them up with uh, the regular old Dicor lap sealant after the brackets are glued down to the roof. Um, we have... Uh, wiring lands or whatever you call them to run the wiring down through the roof then uh, the wiring will go to these disconnects so we'll have one for each array bank this will all be wired with this marine wire i have 14 gauge and 12 gauge on the um on the 200 um, watt bank we're running about 10.3 amps at 54 volts so our 12 gauge wire is plenty enough for that. And then on the 100 amp uh, panel bank, or sorry, 100 watt panel bank, we're only running um, 5.2 amps. So the 14 gauge is plenty for that. It's higher voltage, so that's why it's lower amps. So we're up to 80 volts on the, uh, on the, pan on the four panel 100 watt uh, setup. Then uh, after the, uh, disconnects we're going to wire into these MPPT charge controllers POW Mister which I originally had picked the blue ones um, everybody knows what the blue Victron that's what it is um, I picked those because they were nice and small but the way that they rate their um, they rate their charge controllers is a little bit different and it kind of confused me and the ones I got were way too small um, I thought it was output amperage, it was actually input amperage, so I would have needed these big, super expensive ones. Uh, so I kind of rethought that, went with these Palmister, which are pretty affordable. I don't like the size of them, and I wasn't able to mount them where I wanted to, but they should do the trick great for us. Then um, after these, we're going to wire um, to the inverter panel, to our distribution blocks for positive and negative power. I have a six gauge cable that's going to go from the charge controllers to a fuse box for the positive. I got a 100 amp fuse. I'd like to have a fuse close to the batteries. Good. It's just a good practice. And then we'll just do the negative on a distribution block. 
And then I'm, so there will be one run of this from each charge controller. And then we're going to have, uh, we'll go down to a four gauge, a little bit bigger wire that'll go from the fuse and a distribution block to our uh, positive and negative on our inverter board. Yeah, so we'll give up a little bit of cupboard space, but um, these two cupboards, they, um, they don't really have a lot of space in them anyway. There's uh, this um, bump out here. You have the propane tanks on the other side of that. This is the uh, edge of the truck camper where it goes down and flares out. And um, we have plumbing in here. So really, there's not much usable space in this cupboard anyway. So what I've done is um, bonded a piece of quarter inch ply to the back of these doors because the panels are really thin. So I bonded that with some PL Premium and uh, then I put the inverter screws in there. So, or sorry, not inverter, the charge controllers. So these are MPPT charge controllers so we can come in at a high voltage and then they just mount right there on those screws. Uh, the wires will have to move if we're opening and closing these doors. We may stick some things down in here after, but we'll have good airflow up past them. You know, it's obviously not um, 20 centimeters like they say, but uh, I don't know if that's even possible in, a, in this kind of a scenario. So, you know, we have, they're, they're not super high quality, I don't think, who knows? But uh, they're affordable. If they fail, well, we have redundancy. We have a 400 watt bank and a 600 watt bank. So, you know, even if we lose a side temporarily, we're, uh, we're not out of power. So, so now we just need to, I'll probably put one screw on top of these so they can't lift up. Just maybe a screw just right there or something on one side, just if we're in the bumps, they can't bounce off. And then they should be good and secure there. We'll probably have to add another uh, another closer holder closer to that door. This one already has one and it closes pretty good. I don't think it'll open. But we got a little bit of weight on the door we gotta be concerned about. Then, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to wire into the charge controllers. So the wires come out of the bottom so I'll have my wiring coming from my uh, array, which will be 12 gauge on one of these, 14 gauge on the other. Then I'll have my larger six gauge cable going over towards the batteries. So I'll have to run them out, attach them to the door, then attach them to the uh, cupboard and run them neatly along. And so then they'll kind of, you know, kind of like a door in a vehicle where you have your wires that flex every time you open and close your door. Also, there's the plug-in for the uh, battery temperature monitor. So, so there's a, a probe, sorry. So there's a probe that's going to go on the batteries. Um, I'm going to get that run in too, get that attached to the battery bank. And um, then we can get these, uh, we'll probably get them hooked to the batteries first. And then we'll get the solar stuff running from the top. So now we have our uh, six gauge cable. This is some pretty well protected stuff. It's got a thick casing on it. It's nice stuff. Probably overkill for what we need, but um, it's very flexible. Uh, these uh, charge controllers are max 80 amp output. So they could, if I had enough solar going into one of them, I would could have 80 amps coming out of one. I think 50 something maybe is the most I have out of the one with uh, more, the 600 watt array. So. Um, these are more than enough wire for that. If we do 60 amps, um, if, uh, you know, who knows, maybe I would add more. So I'd, ra I'd rather stay on the larger side for wire. Um, you know, just in case you never know what you're going to do in the future. So we'll wire up with some bigger wires now and we should be good. So that'll pass through into the, uh, into the kitchen covered. I'll run that over to one of the charge controllers and uh, then figure out my length. I still need to figure out where I'm going to park my uh, negative junction block and um, and my fuse. I'm kind of thinking the fuse is going to go down here. I'm kind of out of room on the inverter board which I have out right now but I'm probably going to run down here. I may as well put the um, 
the negative junction block and the fuse side by side. Then I can bring this wire up, split it, put the negative to one, positive to the other. And then from there I'll run the uh, four gauge heavier wire into the junction blocks on the inverter board. Then uh, if I ever do have to take the inverter board out, which I had to this morning to get this stuff all put in on the battery and get my holes back there. But if I ever do have to take it out, then it's just, you know, I'll make it as easy as I can to disconnect wires. It's relatively easy right now, and I'll try not to complicate it too much. So I did put uh, ferrule, fair, how do you say that? Ferrules? Fair, ferrules? Fair, wow. No idea. These crimpy things on the end of the wire helps them uh, connect in a little better. You're not just squishing wire endlessly. Gives them a little bit something more to clamp down on. I think I'm going to, even though this is really nice protection for the wire, I think I'm going to strip it back quite a bit so I get more flexibility when the door opens and closes. I think I'll gain a little bit and um, then I'll mount it on both sides, but I'll have to run my uh, input wire from my um, solar disconnect switch first so then I know how all my wires are going to run and I'll attach them all together. So let's get these connected. Okay, so I have the 14 gauge wire kind of strung along from this end. I'm going to run that along in the cabinet. Put a hole through here into this uh, cabinet beside the kitchen, which has drawers underneath. And what's going to be our coat closet on top by the back door here. So my hole comes through beside the uh, drawer slides here. So both of my wires from both of my controllers will run through there, up through a hole in the bottom of the coat closet. And then I have my disconnect boxes. I mounted them on a piece of um, half inch ply. I under drove the screws a little bit. So the screws will actually go right through into the wall. I don't really, it seems solid this wall. I don't know what's on the back of it, but I don't want things falling off. So I'm going to put a bit of PL on the back of this. Then I'm going to drive those screws in the rest of the way and that uh, plywood will never come off then. I'll probably put it somewhere there around eye level, something like that. And uh, that'll give me room to bring the wires down through the roof and get them hooked into this. And then these wires can come up from the bottom hook into the bottom. I'm not putting the weatherproof uh, lands in there. Uh, these are watertight boxes, but um, we don't need water tightness in here. If we do, we have a problem. So, so there's our wire to hook into the bottom of the uh, array disconnect switch. So we'll get that through the, uh, through the box gland and then connect it to the switch. And we can just set that in there for now because we'll have to pull it out again when we bring the ones down from the uh, from the array down through the roof once we get that hole in there. But we can get these wires all right in the meantime and get things tidied up on this end. I have the uh, the PV disconnects for the two, uh, two solar array setups. So I have the uh, 400 amp array one here, the 600 amp array here, the two wires run down. I got 14 gauge for that one, 12 gauge for that one. And um, I haven't clipped these in yet because I still need to run these wires down and connect them in there. But I, now I know what I need for length of wire. I did leave myself, I'm a big fan of a little bit of wasted wire. I'd leave myself a little loop there if I ever need some extra wire. And um, so then I can run it neatly under the cabinets here and I'll know what my length is and get them hooked to those charge controllers. I didn't video myself rolling around on the floor getting these hooked up, but uh, I have both charge controllers in place. You know, I run the wires across and supported them well on the door here, and um, then they can kind of just bend with the hinge. And the other one over here. Wires all run on the bottom of the cabinet. So we got our two charge controllers. I can monitor the temperature once they're running and I could maybe add a vent in down here to get some airflow going up past them, but we'll see how it goes there. And so those are in and we have the wires run 
into the battery box to, to go to the uh, battery feed and then the um, wires from the solar array run through into this cabinet behind the drawers up through the back and um, I'm still going to mount them to the wall but I just zip tie them together for now to our array breakers disconnects and um, then we're going to once we get the array on the roof we'll run the wires down to those so we got that done the uh, So the wires from the uh, charge controllers come in here. I got Array 1 and Array 2. I labeled them. So I got a, Array 1's a 400 watt and Array 2's a 600 watt. Coming in at different voltages and amperages. So I'm going to get the inverter board back in place now that I have the... Uh, I bundled up the temperature probe wires, all the extra there. Maybe I'll add one more zip tie and then... Uh, I'll be able to put the inverter board back up. I don't need to get at the batteries anymore. And uh, then once that's back in, I will see how I'm going to mount my fuse for the uh, connection for these to the battery, the array wires. And uh, I'll do a junction block for the negative and um, then wire that over to the distribution um, bars on the board. I think I may just put another little piece of plywood down on the lower part of the box here to mount my uh, connections for these and then um, if I ever need to take the inverter out I can just unhook there and take the uh, inverter board out and leave these hooked up so we'll get going on putting that inverter board back in and then uh, cut back in and show you where we're at 100 amp fuse there the six, two six gauge terminals coming from the two charge controllers are hooked on that end. And off the other end of the 100 amp fuse, we go to a four gauge, which goes to our positive bus bar. So we're all hooked up. I just have to put the uh, charger back in place here, but I wanted to show you before I had uh, that hiding things. So we're pretty much done um, in as far as the uh, in this area and the uh, solar charge controllers all the way up to the array switches, the disconnects in the top of the closet. So next step, get up on the roof, get all those solar panels mounted and uh, all the wires run down through and hook to those uh, array disconnects. Hey guys, I'm up here on the roof about to start uh, laying out the solar panels. I did start to put some brackets on one of them at the front, but I want to be sure. I have a hundred at the front and then two hundreds back here. So I want to just lay them ones out to see where I don't want to put one in the wrong place. So make sure everything works out. Um, I haven't actually put any of the physical panels up here yet. I've only done measurements. So hopefully my measurements are right. There is a, a boat here. If we look, we're looking at the side of the camper here. Right around, you can probably see, I think somewhere around here. If you stand way back, you can see it really well. The roof kind of comes up and then levels off. So I may try to keep the 100 below that. What I did, for the 100, I made a long angle iron bracket for the front, so wind can't get under it. My concern, you know, with this VHB tape, the roof is kind of um, rounded a little bit too. So I actually had to put a slit halfway to get an, a bend on it so it matches the roof pretty good. And uh, the VHB tape is the thicker stuff though, so it has some uh, ability to um, go on a regular surface, so it doesn't need to be perfectly, perfectly flat. If you had a really thin tape, it would have to be. I put my bolts out near the edge. So in the future, if I want to tip the panels this way, I can undo bolts on one side and put an extension in there. I'm not really too concerned about that right now, but I'm gonna leave provision for it. Um, on the back, I'll put two smaller brackets. And I think that'll be good enough from looking what other people use to glue on panels or tape on panels. So, uh, yeah, I'm still kind of 
Um, not super confident about the tape, but everybody seems to do it. All the cool kids are doing it. So I have the uh, 200s laid up here. I want to leave enough space between them that I can um, get at the bolts easily enough. So I'll be sure to leave extra space there. The angle iron brackets are going to curve in. So I'll mount, I'll glue them down, then unbolt the panels, then um, put lap sealant all around, then bolt them back on. But they'll curve underneath so they won't interfere with each other. The, I'll leave a similar space here. I want to make sure, I'll probably maybe just line them all up so it's uh, along the outer edge down the side. I may just launch the drone and look down on it and that'll probably, because there's not really a straight edge to come off of. So uh, on the edge it's a curved side down here. So maybe the drone will make that easier. So I got these uh, the pilot holes all drilled on the four corners now. I'm going to oversize the holes in the uh, panel now, big enough for these nut certs. So we'll get four bigger holes in here. Get this guy loaded on the tool. Good squeeze. There we go. There we have uh, nut certs in the end there now. They're swelled up and attached. So we can bolt our corners to the angle iron that will be taped to the roof. Okay, so there's a 100 watt panel ready to go. This will be the front. So I have the solid bar that's contoured to meet the roof. So the wind can't get under it so much at the front and then just smaller brackets at the back one angle on each side couple inches long each and um, they're bolted in with stainless hardware into the nut cert so we're gonna get that fit up there and then uh, we just have to kind of do this process to all the panels I think we're getting there. It's pretty good. So now I'm going to put uh, black marker marks on the corners of all, well, maybe not black marker, maybe pencil, in case I move something. I'll put pencil marks on the corners of all the panels and then I'll know where they're all going to be located. And then I can take up each panel clean up the roof surface. I think I'm going to sand it a bit with like 600 grit maybe just to get the oxidization off. And um, then maybe I'll clean it with some quick start or something. I don't think I have any acetone. And uh, put the tape on the angle iron brackets which I um, need to clean those too with some sandpaper. They get a little bit of corrosion on them. As you can see I only put four brackets even on the big panels I used up all my two inch aluminum angle so maybe I'll add some on the side after I don't know what do you guys think do I need more than what do I have two by no that's three three by two so six square inches on each corner so 24 square inches of ceiling of uh, sticking surface for each panel um, I don't know if that's enough what do you guys think should I add more brackets on the big panels I've never used this tape before so for anybody that's done it with tape before you think that's enough let me know so we have all the panels placed I'm just starting to trace the outline of the mounting brackets uh, with a pencil everything is sitting pretty good with the exception of this one panel the roof curves about here and it's just past the curve so you can see the uh, angles aren't sitting nice with the roof like other ones are so i'm gonna have to make these uh, a little bit of a tighter bend so i'll take them off and uh, get them in the vise 
Give them a little bit of a bend to uh, make them sit nice and flat on there. But other than that, everything's looking pretty good. I'll get everything traced out as to where they are. Get those brackets bent. And then we can start uh, putting tape on, cleaning things up and sticking these suckers down. Start with this front panel. I have my pencil marks where I need to clean up. Now, take the uh, little bit of corrosion that's on this aluminum off with the 600 grit. I think it's 600 or oh, 400. 400 grit sandpaper. From what I understand, the smoother the surface, the better for this tape. But, uh, well, I got 400. We'll get the bit of oxidation. Oxidation? Oxidization? I don't know. Something like that. Off the roof. I don't want to sand my pencil marks off though. wipe I already wiped those and these corners over here so we'll put some tape on these things and then the scary part sticking it down so I don't know these things come in different numbers at like 51 something or whatever there's I see talk of all different numbers the stuff I got just says VM or 3M VHB tape, but it's got a bit of thickness to it, which is kind of what I wanted. So it, if it's a little bit uneven, it can absorb that and still stick. So we'll get strip put on. I have this one inch tape and then I have half inch tape. I think I'm gonna do a one inch along the front and a half inch down the back on this long one, just so I don't use all my one inch. So, one thing is, once these things are stuck down, these connectors, they don't fit under the panel. So I need to make sure they go the right way when I stick them down. So technically, if I line the front up, it should all work out. And not stick the back yet. I would assume once it's stuck, it's stuck. So. One's going back. One's going that way. That one should be stuck down. I think it's, oh, look at that. Remember what I said? Can't fit those. Yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. So now I gotta unbolt that so I can lift it up enough to slide that out, but that's no big deal. So one stuck down. Cool. Move along and uh, you guys don't need to watch me do that over and over and over again. So uh, I'll spare you that. But uh, yeah, we'll continue that same process. On the big panels, I'll definitely use two pieces of the wide tape to get as much contact area as possible. And maybe add brackets after, some extra brackets. I don't know, we'll see. We'll uh, see what you guys say. And uh, it'll be a while till I hit the road with this thing anyway. So we'll uh, get them stuck down like that for now. And um, I'll get back at you when I'm doing the wiring to show that a little better. Forgot to uh, turn the camera on for that, but I placed this one down. I did the uh, this side first, so because I, I could see the line. So put this side on. I got the piece of roll of tape at the back there holding that up, and uh, so I got to oh. stick that back down. But my bend looks pretty good. We're sitting pretty nice on the roof now. 
and uh, and I ran my wires the wrong way again. So I'll have to unbolt that, but no big deal. Maybe I'll do that right now before I stick the other side. Now that I think of it, it doesn't really matter where the wires go right now because I got to unbolt them all, take them up, put lap sealant around so uh, no debris can get in under the tape, protect it from the weather, and we'll keep that good bond. And um, we'll actually have a little bit more bond of that, uh, of the uh, Dicor lap sealant. So that'll be a little bit more hold. All the uh, brackets for the solar panels are glued down now or taped down. They seem pretty, like they've been on there for, uh, I did some yesterday, or at least for probably 24 hours. Some of them have been on there and I give some of the small ones a really good tug and man, they seem pretty solid. So it's looking good. So I got them all on now. I've taken the panels off. So, um, except for this one behind me, it's just kind of sitting there out of the way. And uh, I'm going to now put lap sealant around all the uh, angles to seal them down so moisture can't get in and affect the tape. And uh, then once all the lap sealant's on, then uh, all the panels can go back up and I can get them wired in. So let's start putting lap sealant on. We'll start at the back. So I'm going to kind of guesstimate here. I'm going to put the hole to run the wires down into the closet. So it should be roughly in that area, but I'm not 100% sure. So I could just see it poking through in the closet. I'm a little um, in more than I would like, but I don't know, I didn't want it to be underneath this rail so I could drill them a little easier, so that'll be fine. I went and got a straight bit. So we're through there now. And then I'm gonna do the other hole in from that one. So then this little guy is gonna sit there over top of the holes. And uh, a little bit and the wires will go up under these this panel and then distribute and uh, I'll put some of that uh, the narrower tape there to tape that down I'll sand this first and clean it up and uh, then I can lap seal in that once it's on there too I've run uh, a run of 12 gauge and a run of 14 gauge and I'll just get enough that uh, they're out. And then I can just kind of pull more if I need. I still have them on the roll down there in the closet. So I'll just get them out here, lock them in for now. And then uh, when I see how much I need, depending on what panel I'm hooking to, I can uh, just kind of loosen off these gland nuts and pull out more. So I'll get some uh, sticky tape on the bottom of this and we'll just stick her down right there. Okay, so it's all cleaned up. The tape is on there. So we're ready to stick her down. I think I will go right about there. Now we'll try and get some lap sealant in there without making too much of a mess, hopefully. Okay, I haven't put the uh, panel in the center yet that goes sideways there, just so I can run the wires under it. I haven't put the bolts on the end of this one yet. This is my negative lead coming from the loop of panels back to the charge controller. And then the other end of the loop, this panel here, the positive lead, will be going back to the charge controller. So, so I'm gonna run this 14 gauge. This is, there is a 200 amp panel that sits here. So it's gonna go under that 200 amp panel, under this 100 amp panel, and my junction 
I'll run this one forward. My junction for positive and negative will be under this panel for the string of 100 amp uh, or 100 watt panels. I'm going to pull enough of this 14 gauge to go all the way up. Two about there. And we'll be going under the 200 panel, under this 100 panel, and making our junction under the next 100 panel. So we'll make our junction right there. And then we'll be good to feed all the way back. Get this one bolted down. Then I'll make my junction up there. And um, then I'll probably hook things up underneath before I make the final connection. Um, I don't want to create high voltage when I'm working with it, so you want to be disconnected. And uh, if I have all the panels connected together, you're looking at 100 volts, so I don't really want to be playing with 100 volts. So I'll leave out the last connection in the loop. Doesn't matter that some are connected together as long as I don't have a complete loop. I won't have any voltage at the other side and I won't get a surprise. So, this is my positive, so I'm gonna put it on the red. I got about an inch of uh, wire bared off there. Uh, my connector is here. So I'm gonna slide that on there. And pull my wire back, so I'm crimping on the non-insulated part of it. I will put this do flicky on. Locked in there. And we are connected to positive. Okay, and that one connects to this panel. So we have a loop, but I'm not going to connect that last panel in. I'm going to bolt this one in here now, and uh, but I'm not going to do that last connection. I'll just leave those wires out because they're going to connect under the 200. So this one's going to hook to this panel that goes here. The other wire from this panel is going to go out, connect underneath the 200 that goes there to this panel. But I'll leave that connection disconnected while I wire up down to the uh, charge controller. Okay, we have all our 100 amp, or sorry, 100 watt panels installed. One, two, three, four. And uh, they're all on, tightened down, wired in. I just have one MC4 connector over there to connect together to finish the loop. And uh, so I'm gonna go down in the closet, wire up to the uh, solar disconnect switch for that bank of panels and we should have power coming in once I connect that one together after I have it hooked up. So we'll get down there and get that done now. I got those ferrules clamped in there. We just need to feed this sucker back in. Just give it a push, yeah. I just need to go up on the roof, connect that last MC4 connector together. Then before I turn this on, I will be checking there for voltage, make sure my polarity is correct. And then we'll send the power over to the charge controller if that looks good. Okay, you guys watch that meter for me and I will get on the positive and negative with the leads here and we'll see what we have. 91 volts. Can you see that? 91.8. So I was saying it's about 100 volts. I think they're like 
24 and a half or something open open circuit voltage so um yeah pretty close to 100 volts so so we're at 13.2 volts on the battery side and zero volts on the solar side we'll flick that breaker on and uh see what happens she's ramping up 35 these uh, controllers are max 160 volts 67 70 From what I understand, these are a little slower as far as tracking with the multi-point tracking. Um, they don't figure it out quite as fast as a uh, the blue ones, whatever they're called. I guess it's within you know a few seconds longer or whatever. 80 volts. Well, we got charge coming in, so that's a start. So we have 400 watts of solar, which is equal to what we had on the Duchess total, and we're going to add another 600 more once I get those 200 watt panels up. But we're charging batteries now. So I got everything hooked up to that uh, that one charge controller and um, everything looked good until it didn't. I didn't really know what was going on. I was getting an over voltage warning. Um, I got into the manual and started reading. Couldn't find any reason. It says um, in the specs in the manual here, you can see it says max solar array open circuit 160 volts but if you actually you know it's kind of my fault i didn't research enough but um, if you go onto the amazon listing and look in the fine details of the specifications you'll find where it says because this can run 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt. When you get up in the higher voltages, you can get 160 volt input, but at 12 volt, it maxes out at 80. And we're running 90-ish. So I got an over voltage, so no good. I gotta change my panel configuration if I'm gonna use that charge controller, which really is fine. Um, because of my panels being at different angles, it's probably not optimal to be in a full series configuration anyway. And um, actually one thing I realized after also was putting all my connectors underneath this one panel was a pretty good idea because um, I only have to hinge this panel up and I can change my connections. So I've already disconnected the full loop of four panels and I have a loop now of the two panels that are on this side, this one and the front one here. So you can see the front panel, which angles, angles a little bit this way because of the roof angle. And that panel, which angles exactly the same, are now connected in a series circuit. So uh, what are they, 20 some volt open circuit. So we're bringing in close to 50 volts with those two and about five amps. And then we'll connect the other two panels in the same configuration. I do actually have a couple of these parallel connectors. So these parallel connectors will go in, uh, in line with these. So then we'll have two series strings. Okay, we're good there. So I'll put one hook there, one hook there. Okay, it's all making sense. And this is the one that's tight. Oh, there she goes. Okay. So now I still need to hook up this panel. Okay, right, so now we have this loop hooked back up. So we got two panels in there now, and we have connectors for a positive and a negative available there and there. So we'll have uh, two series strings in parallel and uh, we'll come in at um instead of like 90 volts and 5 amps we're going to come in at like 45 volts and 10 amps so that's fine that'll work i just need to uh this one here we'll hook fine onto there 
And then the other one that hooks on to here is from that panel. So I'll need to um, put a little extension on that. I'll have to make up a little wire to make it reach here. And that's all I'm gonna have to do. And then I can put this back down and we can get on to putting the 200 watt panels on. All right, so we got a four foot extension. We'll go through it up there and then we'll have two more panels in action. I got the 100 watt panels all finished and I'm getting started on the 200s now. Okay, so I changed my mind. Instead of putting the connectors under the panel on that side, I moved over to this side. This is the back panel by where the wires come through. I made an extension like I did with the 100 watt panels to get the other wire over to here. So I got my positive extended from the front panel. And then this is the last panel in the loop. My negatives here. So we got a, uh, a series arrangement with 24.5 open circuit voltage. So we're 73 and a half total voltage and we can do 80 on the charge controller. So we're maxing her out on this string, but we're not over voltage like we were with the four panel arrangement with the 100 watt panels. We got that breaker wired up. So it's hooked up up on the roof now. We'll switch her on. I got the covers on there so they're all protected. I've already switched the uh, charge controller to lithium. So we got 420 watts coming in. We have 600 watts of panel. Now yeah, it seems like it's still figuring things out here. Last thing to do up here is I'm going to uh, just zip tie some wires together a little bit just so things don't flap around too much. We're gonna get uh, get the wiring tidied up a bit, get this last panel tightened down and everything else is tightened down. I'll put a couple zip ties together so when wires cross they're kind of connected so we'll have less movement. A couple here and there and uh, then I think we are coming to the end of the install. We'll just do a little bit of testing and uh, will be complete. So I've been running the heat gun on the batteries or on the inverter for uh, oh half an hour at least probably maybe a little more. Um, I got the batteries down to 83 percent so maybe I can shut that off now and I'll uh, see what kind of input we have from the panels. I don't know how much sun we have. Um, well it's pretty good. It's not much for clouds. So we should get some pretty decent power now. Let's have a look. Okay, so it says we are drawing one amp right now. So I'm not sure what's on. Oh, the inverter's on. I can turn that off. So now we are drawing 0.2 of an amp. Which I don't think, oh, I guess the, uh, the carbon monoxide detector's on. Maybe that's it. 0.2 of an amp. And so I'll turn the uh, panels on and we'll see what we get here. Click on switches for both arrays. So we got a thousand watts of solar in a perfect world, but we're not aimed perfectly to the sun. So we'll see what we get. It's jumped right up to 30 and it's climbing from there. So the MPPT trackers will um, sort of figure it out and take a little bit. But you know, I would think within 30 seconds or something, they should know what's going on and optimize what they need to do. And the sun comes and goes. So we're 40 amps coming in right now. And we're pretty much pure sun. Angle to the panels though, of course. Yeah, so we're running around 40 amps, which, uh, I would say with the Duchess, I would get, you know, 20 amps with that kind of sun. So we're double, which we have a little bit more than double double the amount of panels, but yeah, it's variable. So I think that's pretty good. And um, we can do a lot with that 40 amps coming in. Our fridge draws like four and it only runs half the time, if that. 
And really, other than that, run the laptop is the main thing we do with power. So um, I think we have ample power. We're 41 now. So, you know, we could optimize that, probably get up, you know, to uh, way more than that if um, we wanted to angle them towards the sun and stuff. But really, I think we're pretty good uh, there. But we'll run it for a while and let you guys know how it makes out. I'm happy with that, and uh, I think we're done. We just gotta clean up our mess and get on to the next task. So to relate, the uh, 40 amps is equal to a little over 500 watts of solar power. So there we're at 44 amps, 565. So we have a thousand watts. So we're getting a little over half of what our panels are capable of doing. Um, if they were in perfect direct sunlight. We have from the 600 watt panels, we got 29 amps right now. And from the 400 watt panels, 20 amps. Out. So that gives you an idea of what they're putting out. So this concludes the solar panel portion of our three part electrical series. If you didn't see them in part one, we did all the upgrades we need to do to the wiring inside the truck camper. In part two, we installed our inverter, battery bank, and all the associated components with that. And in this episode, the solar panels and all the related components to that. Thanks for following along and be sure to tune in to our next truck camper renovation video when we'll be doing, you'll see.